the true believers must come together among the common values and references while acknowledging variety of belief and practice. Ignorance breeds fear. Fear breeds prejudice and hatred, and hatred promotes violence. Each of us must see the others also as the children of Abraham and be tolerant when we do not share their beliefs. We are glad that the Niagara Foundation has chosen Mount Prospect to locate one of its cultural centers. I like that the message of the foundation is one that promotes global fellowship and that the cultural center is seen as both a gathering place for people from Turkey and a way to offer hospitality to all those who want to know more about their culture. The best part of my job right now is meeting the many uh, diverse groups in my district, especially the Niagara Foundation. I was so pleased when Kamal came to my office and we met and he apprised me of the group and that you had a new community center in my hometown, which uh, I'm very thankful he has invited me over to meet with his board and learn more about your issues and have a tour of the new center. Um, it's very refreshing that we have a group such as the Niagara Foundation, which stresses uh, our values that bring us together, like tolerance and mutual respect and um, in public service. So I, I'm very pleased and I'm thankful for the opportunity to meet with so many of you here this evening. I believe that Abraham is a wonderful example for us in our interfaith participations. Following him, we should use our minds and hearts, reason and faith in a harmony in order to create a more peaceful world. And we should remember that self-sacrifice is an important virtue to be able to obtain God's blessings. Islam is a broad river with many currents one of which is the Islam of Turkey, which we see today represented in such forms as the Niagara Foundation and in the Gulen movement. Members of the, of the Niagara Foundation and others of us who have been touched by the teachings of Batullah Gulen are compelled to reach across national and religious borders and dialogue with acts of benevolence. I want to share my two presuppositions for interfaith dialogue. First, I join most human beings on earth in affirming that there is one God. Judaism says it this way in the great Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Islam, in the wonderful Shahada, there is no God but God. Christianity, despite our Trinitarian doctrine, we affirm God is one. Uh, several years ago, one of my students at the conclusion of the course came up to me after class and she said, Dr. Parker, I want to thank you for this class. Now, I would like you to think all students do that to me after every course I teach. <laughs> uh, so stay with that. She said, um, thank you. At the beginning of this course, I was a polytheistic Hindu. I am now a monotheistic Hindu. I said, tell me about this. She said, well, all the gods that I thought existed in Hinduism are but manifestations of the one true God. There is but one God. She is a monotheistic Hindu, as are most of the Hindus that I've met when I take students to India in, in our January interim. We have a course called The Religions and the Peoples of India. And there I meet monotheistic Hindus up and down every street in every college and university in the temples there. Monotheism is the religious worldview that is dominant today. That's my first presupposition, one God. Second presupposition, God is good. And all that God does is good. Now this is important and in no way trivial. Only a few people actually believe this. I believe that God is good, pure good, absolutely good, good in every way, unequivocally good, and does only good. God is, God is good. These two statements are the presuppositions that bring me into interfaith dialogue. And that's it. It's that easy. It's that simple. I don't make it any more difficult. So I dialogue with persons of other religions 
with the confidence that I'm a good person and that they are good persons, and that we will talk together about all manner of things. If my particular truth claims arise, we can discuss them if we wish. If your particular truth claims arise, we can discuss them as well. These are just several of the many areas upon which we may agree or disagree, and we will discover together how to work them out in goodness. But two things remain unchanged, God and God's goodness. I have an image. God is sending a message to the world. Who will be for me? Whom can I rely on? Whom can I trust? Who will devote himself to me unconditionally? And that message, I assume, went on for years and years without any takers. No worthy replies. Then comes Abraham. Somehow he hears this summons. Get going, move out. Leave everything that has been yours, everything that you have cherished, everything that you have known behind. And trust yourself to me. I will take you into another land. I'll make you a great nation, and most surprising, and perhaps most difficult and challenging, you are to be, together with your descendants, a blessing to humanity. When God looks at us and contemplates the damage we do to each other, and to the world in which we live. And one can only hope, can one not, that God will not give up his vision, his ultimate hope, that you and I, and if not you and I, at least perhaps our descendants, who knows when, in the near or most likely in the far future, will come closer to achieving God's dream of shalom, of a humanity united in justice, in mutuality. Well, perhaps tonight, If God were present and looks at us and hears of what we are about and how somehow we hope that by our presence, by our work, by our thoughts, guided by this institution that has these dreams and hopes for its program, we might come just a little closer to what really is supposed to be our destiny. Coming together like this is both a wonderful event, but it also is a demonstration of the fact that interfaith work the search for interfaith dialogue is a high-risk venture. Each of us comes with our own identities, and they are not to be given up, otherwise there can be no dialogue. But each of us also has to come with the willingness openly to hear the other. For if we are not prepared, not just to listen, but to hear 
who the other is and what the other has to say, then we would be here under false pretenses. What we need to be and to demonstrate and to live, and not only here tonight, but in our entire lives, is the willingness to really hear who the other is, what the other has to teach, how the other lives and thinks. And then when we take this ultimate risk, this vulnerability towards each other, then, my friends, miracles can happen. Uh, certainly the world is changing, and Mount Prospect is changing along with the rest of the world. And I like to think that, uh, at least within our own community, that change is for the better. Because I think we've had an opportunity, and, and we increasingly have opportunities to grow to know one another. And that is the thing, as Kamal pointed out, and other uh, the speakers have pointed out this evening, that once you have an opportunity to know another person, it's much, much more difficult to dislike that person. And that's why something of this nature is so tremendously important, I think, to have an opportunity to grow to know one another and to understand one another and to visit with one another and to, and to share some of the concerns and some of the uh, aspirations and thoughts and so forth that, uh, that others are willing to share around a dinner table of this type. This is an important event and, and an important event, uh, function to the Village of Mount Prospect. And so I'm deeply appreciative, Kamal, of the Niagara Foundation of sponsoring and hosting an, an event of this type so that we do have an, understand, have an opportunity to grow, to understand, and to, and to dialogue, and to share together, and to, and to grow, to continue our friendship, our respect, and our love for one another. And God has created us for relationship, relationship with God and with each other. And that's what we are able to do here, to really build that relationship um, the way that Niagara pulls us together, and not just in words, dialogue, but I've mentioned this before to some of you, but the dialogue, the di thank you. You know, we who are short need to make sure we pull it down first, right? But the dialogue from our heart, with or without words, when we are with our family, and this becomes a time after time, and for me, the family continues, my human family continues to expand. And I think really through the, the blessings of the, the way that Niagara, Kamal, his family, uh, those, Bill El Fati, uh, so many, I could name so many that, uh, and I hope to name more, to be able to name more with time, but the names are right here inside my head, a few are. But what a blessing, what a blessing and a richness. Uh, those that, those heart connections, those individuals that are invited, as Paul, as others, and Rabbi, to speak with us, to share with us, you touch our hearts. And again, this is possible because of the, the generosity, the hospitality, the beauty of Niagara Foundation, which I would say truly are the, the heart center, the heart of our interfaith connection here in Chicagoland. So thank you for your invitation, Kamal, and my dear family and friends. And I think we all have a lovely thing for you and feel you in our hearts. Thank you. What a privilege to be nudged here tonight. I am just getting on board to Mount Prospect. I think in the words of our new senator here that spoke earlier, that I just moved into Mount Prospect in the past five weeks and have been the pastor for the last seven, going on seven months, following the wonderful relationship that you built with Trinity United Methodist Church under Pastor Kirk Reed. So it is my privilege to be honored to be part of this night. You have provided for me a marriage. And I must confess, I have rushed from the altar, you know, and not been able to stay at the altar personally. But professionally, you have brought a marriage for me tonight. 
And how you've done that is you've brought together in this room for me my heart, which is partly at Loyola University, where I teach religions in America. And I study the with under the mentoring through the internet of Diane X Encountering God and the Pluralism Project at Harvard University, where I talk about with my students not an absolute truth, but a portal portals of multiple truths as we search and seek out the divine and the impact of the divine upon our lives. And then I come into Mount Prospect where I'm called to be pastor, where I speak of peace and reconciliation. And here I come and find within my new community, the marriage of this community of dining together, breaking forth sacred conversation that holds us in grace and hospitality to one another. I am grateful for this opportunity, and I pray to the holy that I might be part of your community in years to come. Amen. I think what we hear tonight is we should not have any preconceived ideas about anybody. We should approach everybody with open-minded. So. I like to add to this a small point for us all, and that's the word unity. Can we as humans have unity? Can I regard everybody in the society, wherever they come from, as I look at a member of my family? If we do that, then we can create whatever dialogue we have. There will be no misunderstandings at all. If we think about unity among all of us. As we mentioned, as Dr. Uh, Paul mentioned earlier, no matter what our differences may be, if you can find a common ground that God is good, and I agree with you 110%, and God is one, the, the miracles that Dr. Uh, that Rabbi Shalman had, uh, was mentioning earlier will begin to uh, come about. I was, I was reading someplace uh, in, in the search of understanding my faith as well as uh, understanding Christianity and Judaism. Linguistically, in Hebrew, God is referred to as Ilah, Elohim, or in Arabic, Ilah. The language that Jesus spoke in Aramaic, he said he referred to God as Allah, the One. If we come to understand that in our, this, the, the deity that we all refer to, the one, the God, Allah, is one, that is one, one place we should all uh, come together. Once again, a, a wonderful event, uh, an opportunity to utilize these personal fellowships to build a true foundation for the opportunity for interfaith dialogue and respect. When we recognize that the three major world religions of the Abrahamic tradition, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, out there in the world, regrettably, in the name of their religion, they are fighting one another, they are killing one another. Anger, anger and hatred are there. That was not the case tonight. And in large purpose of this opportunity to gather together is to the great credit of Niagara. And I appreciate the opportunity to have been associated with Niagara for like three years now and always look forward to each and every one of these events. All of my friends, my family at Niagara that you have so taken, not just me, but those in my community of faith into your hearts, because that's what you do. I, I, I never sense a separateness, but an inclusion, a beautiful love and, and um, the way that you empower
and love others and you connect. It's not about you, it's about God and our relationships. I really enjoyed learning about the culture and it was an excellent evening for me. It was a very interesting evening. I enjoyed all the talks and, and the food, of course, was delicious. I think sometimes that, that uh, when people have problems with each other, it's fear of something they don't understand. And uh, it's hard to be afraid of someone you, you just sat down and ate dinner with. Um, and it just, it's just been really, really interesting. And, and I love the opportunity to get to know people better.